In this tutorial, we're going to talk about exceptions, and I'd like to start by looking at some code that's very similar, but not exactly the same as the code from the last tutorial. I want to do this to show you some of the everyday problems that developers face. So I'll start by running this code, and then you can see right off the bat we get a null reference exception. And the reason is because right here I explicitly set SR to null, and then I called the readline method on a null reference. So we can go ahead and stop debugging, come over here and I'll fix that. Clearly this doesn't need to be null, so I'll set it to a new stream reader, and I'll pass it the name of the file that I want to read from. So if I were to run this code, once again you can see that there's an error with our code. In this case it's a file not found exception. So I'll go ahead and stop debugging. And this problem can be remedied by adding dot dot slash dot dot slash, and I run the code again. And you can see that most of it ran, but we have some issues with the format of our data. So let's stop debugging. And I'll come over here and look at my data. And you can see the data looks sort of okay, but in this case you can see that this 500 is actually a 50 with an O. So then we'll change that. So the point is that there's any number of things that can go wrong with our code. It could be that a file isn't found, it could be that there's a problem with the data on the inside of the file, or it could be that it couldn't parse it. There's just any number of things that could go wrong. So in this tutorial, we're going to talk about how exception handling can help us to gracefully exit when a problem occurs. As always, it's probably a good idea to talk about things at a high level. So the basic idea is pretty simple. We have some code that could mess up in some way, such as a file not being found, or maybe it has some bad data, we could have null references in our code, or even the network could be down. So we attempt to do this code by wrapping it in a try block. And if something messes up, an exception is thrown. Now what's an exception? An exception is a class in C-sharp, and it has several different subclasses, including a file not found exception, a null reference exception, a bad image format exception, and believe it or not we can create our own exceptions by inheriting from exception. But anyway, the exception is thrown, and then we catch it in the catch block. Now we can handle that exception however we want. We could tell the user that we couldn't find the file, or perhaps the network is down. Also realize that we can have multiple catch statements. So what we'll do is we'll put the more specific catch statements up above the more generic statements. So for example, because file not found exception is a child class of exception, it makes sense that we would want to put that above. And if a file not found exception is thrown, then this catch is going to catch it and this catch right here is not. If what was thrown was not a file not found exception, then this generic catch down here is going to catch it. And again, that's a perfect example of polymorphism because we're putting an instance of a child class of exception into this variable right here, E. We also have the option of including a finally block, and this is located at the bottom. Realize that the code that's inside of the finally block executes no matter what, and this is a good time to clean up any kind of system resources that you may have open, like stream readers and stream writers. Just realize that this section is optional. So let's go back to our code. Now what we're going to do is retrofit our code so that it includes try, catch, and finally. So we can restructure the code real quick. What I'll do is I'll wrap everything here in a try, and come down here, and then put a catch of this generic exception E, and then we'll stub in a finally. Now there's one tricky scope issue that you're going to see here, and by scope it means who can see what. If I come down here to the finally and I say something like sr.close, notice that it doesn't recognize what sr is. The reason is because sr was declared inside of this try block. So what I have to do is to move this outside of the try block, put sr with a semicolon here, and then say sr gets a new stream reader on the inside. I'll also want to go ahead and set it to null, and because I declared it outside of the try, that means that the catch and finally are going to be able to have access to it. So what are we going to do if an exception is actually thrown? In this case, I'm going to console.writeline, quote, an exception was thrown. In fact, I can do something better than that. I can console.writeline e.message. And the idea here is that there's a string on the inside of the exception that tells us what happened. Also, I'm going to come down here in the finally and say console.writeline, we made it to finally. And what I'll do is I'll come back over here to my song and I'll sabotage it again. And I'll put in a capital O and save it. Go back to my program. 
Now I'm expecting that this line right here is going to be the one that throws the exception. So to show you the flow of the program here, I'm going to console.write line made it here. Now if we were to run this program, chances are what would happen is that we would have this console.write line execute, and then this int duration gets int32 parse is going to be the one that throws the exception. So we should never see this made it here. And that's an important point. As soon as an exception is thrown, the try block stops executing and we come down here to the catch statement. So let's go ahead and run this. And if I move this over so that you can see the code, you'll see that we have console.write line of the data and that's the 300-500 right here. And then an exception was thrown right here when we tried to read in the duration. We come down here to the catch statement and you can see we console.write line an exception was thrown and you can see that in the output. And then we do a console.write line of e.message. In this case, the message was input string was not in a correct format. Once we're done with that, we can jump down here to the finally and we print out we made it to finally and then we can close the stream reader. Now, just to prove a point, I could come down here and catch a format exception. We'll call it f. And then on the inside, I can console.write line we threw a format exception. Now, if I were to run it at this point, and I move it over so you can see the code. So you can see when we execute this line right here and an exception is thrown, we handle it here in the first catch statement where we handle a format exception. The second catch statement doesn't execute. One other thing that we can show is if we come back here to song and we fix the data, putting a zero there, we'll save it, come back over to our program, and if we were to run the code at this point, You can see that it runs without error, meaning that no exceptions were thrown. However, we still made it to the finally statement. So the last thing that I need to show you is how to manually throw exceptions if you need to. So we'll come up here and create a method, static void worthless. That's essentially not going to do anything, but it will throw a new exception. And in this case, we'll pass it the string I am worthless. Now the reason that I passed this string is because this actually goes into the message of the exception. We'll scroll down just a bit. And what I'll do is right after I create this stream reader, I'll call worthless. If I were to run the code at this point, you can see what would happen. Because it wasn't a format exception that was thrown from that function, you can see that the first catch statement doesn't do anything. However, the second catch statement executes because it can catch any child class of exception. And then the last point is note that the finally executes no matter what. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you now understand how you can use try, catch, and finally to gracefully handle errors when they occur.